Okay, I'm going to call this village board meeting for February 25th. February 25th to order, please. Roll call. Trustee Zitzelberger. Here. Sam Baldwin. Mrs. Ringman. Hey. Bill Ringham. Here. <coughs> President Zellner. Here. Bill Wilms. Here. Trustee Moran. Here. Okay, even though it's not on the agenda, I'm assuming this was posted. Correct. Um, apologize, that was on the agenda. This was posted online, sent to the media, and um, posted in all three of our posting locations. Okay. Thank you. Next, we've got public comment. Is there anyone here who would like to address the board on an issue that's not on the agenda for this evening? We do have one sheet. Okay. Um, Asia Dale of 102 West Third. I just wanted to ask, since the grocery stores are such a big, I know I'm not really talking about that specifically, but if you guys would consider being open tonight, so that we could hear how decisions are made. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay, new business. Success and take action on proposed grocery store developments, High V and Festival Foods at County Highway Q and Woodland Drive. So it is our intent to have the majority of this meeting in open session. Uh, the only thing that we would really go into closed session is if there's any negotiations um, that we would need to discuss in regards to um, either of the proposals. So in general, it will all be in open session. So I'm assuming that who's going to introduce? I will, I guess. Head Brian. So I think as just about everybody in the village knows, we, we had a proposal uh, from hy V to build a grocery store uh, on the east side of County Highway Q, south of Woodland Drive. Um, more recently, the village was approached by another grocer, uh, Festival Foods, to potentially build a grocery store on the west side of Highway Q, just south of Woodland Drive. Um, I think part of the, the purpose for having the meeting tonight, and to be clear, you know, if you want to, you can make some form of a decision tonight, but you're not, you don't need to as a village board. We do have a little bit of time. Part of uh, the purpose for the discussion tonight is the, the Hyde project is certainly further along um, in the development process. We, we have, uh, we had an update to the plan commission and to the joint plan commission at their February meetings regarding the Hy-Vee project and the associated development by Forward Development Group. Uh, we received um, additional submittals uh, actually at a technical staff meeting today where we did discuss uh, the uh, revised preliminary and final plats that they've provided and the jet zoning. Um, and the, the schedule that we've identified um, for the two plan commissions and, and, and is we plan to have forward development group um, on the agenda for the March plan commission meeting and the joint plan commission. Uh, and then you know, potentially, uh, as, as the schedule is stated right now, the, their project would come back to the village board on April 1st. Um, there is a, a TIF request associated with the High V project. And that um, process has been built into the different plan commission meetings, uh, village board meetings, and, and joint review board meetings. Um, the, the festival project is not as far along at this point. Um, we have received what I would call as an informal submission that we had, and we had a meeting with Festival Foods today uh, during our technical staff meeting. Um, they are in the process of preparing a site plan and the owner of the property, which I think is going to be Kilkenny, West, Kilkenny Commons West, is in the process of updating its zoning and, um, and, and land division. In this case, it's a certified survey map. Um, I, we've, we've had a, what I will call a request by uh, the developer, uh, Mr. Tierney, um, and, and Festival Foods to effectively delay the hy V project to allow Festival Foods to make its submission so that the, the plan commissions and the village board can consider um, both projects. And I would tell you that, um, you know, no matter what the village board does tonight, or again, you don't have to take any action tonight or potentially at its March 4th meeting, at a staff level, we believe that um, the, the proposals related to the Hy-Vee project and to the forward development uh, group development on the east side of the queue, those should still move forward at the March Plan Commission and Joint Plan Commission meetings. Nothing should stop that from moving forward. I, I think um, one of the, 
I would say that you have a lot of discretion as to how you want to approach this, whether or not you want to um, maybe put, put a pause on the hy V project so that you can consider the Festival Foods project along with it to see which one you think makes better sense. You certainly have the discretion to do that. Um, you have the discretion to say, you know what, we've put in a lot of time and effort on this high V project. We have a lot of terms and conditions that have been discussed between the parties. We think we have a good deal in place, and we want to move forward with that project. I mean, you, you have, and then there may be many other alternatives that you can consider. Um, and so I think that's really, you know, that is in part the purpose for the meeting tonight, to have this kind of policy discussion as to how the Village Board would like to move forward. Um, the reason why I'd say it makes sense to move forward with everything at the plan commission meetings, but not if, if you decide to put a pause on the Hy-Vee project, to not bring forward uh, different submissions at the April Village Board meeting is, is the TIF request. The, the TIF process requires uh, an initial joint review board meeting, which I believe is scheduled for March 11th. Then you have to have a recommendation from the plan commission to the village board as to whether or not the TIF should be created, and if so, what the project costs are going to be and what the boundaries are going to be. And then once the plan commission makes its recommendation, it has to go to the village board, and after that it goes to the joint review board. There is not a, there's nothing time sensitive um, after the plan commission acts, other than you have to wait at least 14 days before the village board can act. But once the plan commission acts, you, you, ha you, you can take as long as you want before it goes to the village board. And then once it goes to the village board, it goes to the joint review board. And um, I, I think one thing for the village board to consider, or part of the reason for tonight's meeting, is what, to what extent would, the, would a discussion be regarding creation of a TIF district for the High V project if you have um, a potential grocer on the opposite side of the street? And again, you, you could say it doesn't matter that we have a potential grocer on the other side of the street. We've, we've made enough progress on this. We think we have a good deal related to the Hy-Vee project. We want to push forward. You know, an alternative line of thinking would be um, we want to move forward with the different zoning and land divisions that Forward Development Group and Hy-Vee have submitted at this point. But before the village board takes any action on the creation of a TIF district, we'd want to take into consideration what festival may offer on the other side because federal public money is involved. Um, I will tell you that we have been informed um, verbally um, related to the Festival Foods Project, and I guess I would say more related to the development, that there is likely going to be a TIF request on the west side of the road, again related to public improvement costs. If I take you back to the discussions that we've had regarding TIF on the east side, it only relates to costs for public improvements. Um, similar statements have been made on the other side of the street that there may be it or there will likely be a TIF request related to public improvements. We do not know what that amount is right now. And so that's one of the things that makes it difficult to kind of make an apples to apples comparison is you don't know what, if any, public money is going to be in on the uh, west side of the road. Um, that's, I mean, I'm willing to answer any questions that you have. The reason why village staff identified this as potentially the ability to go into closed session is we've certainly had a lot of discussions with Forward Development Group and hy V on different terms and conditions that would go into the, the different agreements associated with the project. We've had some preliminary discussions with the folks on the uh, festival and Mr. Tierney for the west side. It's that type of information that if you wanted to really get into the details of that, it would probably be better served to go into closed session. But the policy determination as to how you kind of want to move these projects forward and whether you may want to, um, you know, make sure that one can catch up to the other, that's, that's not, we, the, that discussion should occur in open session. Do we know how much time the festival is talking about? Like well, what we've been told is that they, they, their goal is to hit the March 15th submission date for, um, for, for, for submitting documents for the plan commission, April Plan Commission meeting. They've been informed verbally that when, that's, when that submission is made, that we should get some type of letter of intent from them where, where whether it's Festival Foods or the developer, identify the TIF assistance that would be required and the purpose for any TIF assistance. 
Um, we do believe, I think, at a village staff level that if the village board were to put a pause on the on the Hy-Vee project so that it consider both Hy-Vee and Festival, that we give some type of uh, deadline for Festival so that we're not hanging out here, to, you know, waiting for a submission. Um, the other thing that I would say is, you know, what, some of this, the discussions that we've had with Hy-Vee and Forward Development Group and, and when we've talked about different terms and conditions of the agreements. One of the things that village staff has stressed to them is the importance of getting certain public improvements done associated with the project in 2019. Um, I, I think it, it's, it's up to you all, but it, if we were to delay the high V and the forward project, um, I don't think that we, we may be hard pressed to get some or all of those improvements done in 2019. They may have to wait until 2020. And so part of your evaluation here, I think, would be how important is, is it to get those improvements done in 2019? Is it more important to be able to do an apples to apples comparison between the two projects, knowing that if, if you do that and you put the pause on the high V project, that some of these improvements, maybe all of them, would have to wait until 2020? And the improvements that, that we're talking about are completion of Simon Crestway from Woodland Drive to Peaceful Valley Parkway, um, in intersection improvements at Simon Crestway and Woodland Drive, um, the construction of Sarah Lane, which is an internal road within the forward development. It's just immediately adjacent to the high V, immediately south of the high V lot. Um, some trail improvements. Um, north of the parkway um, on Mr. Ganser's land, and then uh, uh, an improvement related to a water main, extending it to signal. And a signal. Yeah, and I thought, I thought, okay, yeah, a signal and then a water main improvement. Any questions down, down this way at this point? No? Just trying to put together exactly what that timeline looks like the two and nice to see it lined up well I think it, it's 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 a little bit difficult to line it up right now because you know your normal development process and Kevin kick me if I say this I mean we're gonna if, if we get a submission from assuming we get a submission from festival foods and uh, mr. Tierney uh, updates his land division and his zoning by mid-march we're definitely gonna have to work through that and, you know, to say that it would be approved, ready to be approved at the April Plan Commission meeting, I think would be pretty aggressive. I think usually how these things work, especially of a development of this nature, you'd probably, you might go to the uh, uh, April meeting, because it's a March, I, I'm getting my dates mixed up here, you get a Mar mid March submission, you go to the April meeting, you probably get some comments, but to get actually get full approval, you're probably talking about May. And then, because, you know, for either project, certain um, approvals need to come to the village board you're certainly into June um, and and then obviously if there's a TIF request for a request for TIF assistance um, related to the festival project the village is going to have to engage Ellers and Associates to, to work through certain information that would be provided um, you know there is a TIF that it relates to Kilkenny Commons on the east side of the road already there is the potential that um, a new TIF would not have to be created. Rather, the, the current Kilkenny TIF could potentially be amended. But there's still a very public process that you walk through. So, um, you know, I'm, I, I would say you're probably looking at about a two, you know, a two month delay. Whereas, you know, I mean, the schedule that we've laid out or that we've identified with the High V project potentially allows for everything to be done and us getting to the joint review board by mid-April or mid to late April for the potential creation of a TIF. I think you're probably delaying that by two months um, potentially. And, and, and obviously, again, we'd, we'd want to set some type of deadline on Festival Foods to make sure that they're doing everything and Mr. Tierney to make sure that they're doing everything they can to move as quickly as possible. Any comments? Not, not yet. Not right now. So we have a lot of choices we can make today, is what, what I'm hearing. I think it's important to take into account that we're looking at the village's interests as a whole as we look at this. And as we're going with public funds, that's probably the only thing that's slowing this down 
in, in my world. Festival is, is, has every opportunity. I'm concerned, Brian, we have two grocers. One has stated that they're gonna build, they would wanna build regardless if there was a store across the street. The other says they wouldn't want to uh, in conversations if one was across the street. Do we run any risk of potentially having two grocers across the street from one another? Um, I don't know that that's what we would want for our infrastructure as well. So I'm, I'm Who said that? Walk me through that. Well, I would tell you this. I mean, I would answer that question by saying I think the village definitely has the discretion to only have one grocery store. Um, I'm not a planner. The idea of having two grocery stores across the street from each other doesn't seem like for a community the size of Wanakee. Maybe in Milwaukee that makes sense, but not in, in, in Wanakee. Um, there, there's different, uh, there are different mechanisms that the village will be able to utilize to ensure if that's what the village board, if the village board does not want grocery stores right across the street from each other, we have different tools at our disposal to make sure that that doesn't happen. It is also, I mean, just from a pure planning standpoint. Um, I do think that you, again, one of the, I'm, I'm not trying to add, and, and I want to be clear, as I'm talking through this, I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to advocate for one project or the other. That's not my goal at all. All I want to be able to do is kind of talk through with you all your different options because I do think that you have discretion. I think you have just, you know, one of the things that we've talked about is you, you can sleep on this. You know, you don't need to make any decisions tonight. This can come back up on the agenda for your March 4th board meeting if you don't want to make a decision tonight. Which but is, Which is why I wanted to get this yeah. in front of the board as soon as possible. If we were going to make any decisions like that, I thought it was important that we have this meeting so we could be prepared for the next meeting to make a decision potentially. Yeah. Um, but, and, and I don't even know how, I mean, I'd have to defer to Kevin or folks at the utilities about how you, you know, to what extent it would make sense from a utility or a traffic standpoint to have, you know, I can think of any number of reasons why you may not want to have grocery stores right across the street from each other, notwithstanding any statements that have been made. In addition to the arguments that you're going to have, um, which side is better than the other for the grocery store as far as all of our infrastructure goes, our traffic flows, our patterns, uh, how's it going to blend in, all of those things. We, it's hard to assess what's happening on the west side right now. Uh, we've seen a little bit of preliminary of showing what the store is going to be, but we don't know how that's going to impact the rest of that area. Uh, in looking at the high V, which we've been talking about more, we've have, we have a very clear picture right now on what that infrastructure is going to look like. So I think that, that makes this difficult. Um, I, I don't like this, the, the term that was used to delay. I don't like that term um, in this situation. I think it's more of we want to make sure that we're being prudent in looking at both of our options, especially with public funds being used. Um, and, and if I could add something to that, I mean, the Hy-Vee and Forward Development Group have been very good to work with as we've put together the schedule. You know, the schedule that we identified at the different, at the February Plan Commission and Joint Plan Commission meetings, those schedules were put forward by village staff in working in conjunction with the developer um, with the focus on making sure that the public improvements could get done in 2019. So I just want to make clear that that was, I don't think it was an aggressive schedule because we've been working with these folks since, you know, they appeared at the June 2018 Plan Commission meeting. Um, but that's, that's the reason why the schedule was identified, at least from our perspective. And we honestly, we put a little bit of pressure on them to say that we wanted this schedule so that we get the improvements in 2019. So you, you delay may be the wrong word. It may be putting a pause on the schedule that's been discussed between the developers and, or the developer and the village. I just think it's important for you all to recognize that if you do put that pause on, um, that it may, there's, there's definitely the possibility that the, the improvements that we've discussed with hy and Forward about getting done in 2019, there's definitely the possibility that that wouldn't happen. We have no estimate of what the TIF cost on the, on the west side would be? Not right now. Mm -hmm. When will we know? We're hopeful, right? We've requested that information as part of the March 15th submittal. The other perception I don't want to have out there is that we're not acting in good faith. Um, to any of our developers that are coming in, we're, we're looking at what's the best interest of the community and we can say no, just like we can say yes um, to either developer. And I think our community has been pretty clear that they would like to see another grocery store. 
we have two competing grocery stores in here right now. And we have two developers that want to develop properties that are right right next to one another with it. So it's it's what makes most sense right now. And that's why I wanted to collectively discuss this and how, how you guys want to proceed. Um, because it's a little bit of a difficult decision where we're at right now. So if we don't make a decision tonight, which I don't feel prepared to do because I just am wrapping my head around this, um, both parties continue to move forward, correct? Yeah, we're, we're exactly right. Um, so nobody is delayed in that. If there wasn't TIF involved in this, it, it would be a lot easier, but when you're looking at public dollars, needing to know what's in the best interest of the taxpayer is important, I think, in terms of my making a decision. I do think we knew about both of these pretty much around the same time. It wasn't that far apart, but one was much more further advanced. Either would be good grocery stores. Mm -hmm. um, I am bothered by not having a date when Hy-Vee will commit to start and be open because if we're gonna do this, that's why we're doing it. I don't wanna wait forever. I mean, I think that's important. I don't understand why they wouldn't make a decision, especially if they're going to invest $2 million in infrastructure. That doesn't make sense to me. So I'd like to hear more on that as well. I think that's important. Well, I mean, I, I'll, I can tell you that right now we have a telephone conference scheduled with hy uh, for Wednesday because we're working through um, some, uh, some issues on the TIF agreement. I think to I'll be honest with you, I think all of them will get worked through, but um, we can we can raise that issue during that telephone conference. Mm -hmm. And I just point out it's, it's more than the two million dollars that they're putting up for the TIF. They also have to purchase that land. Well, no, I know it's cost. I know I know it's a big commitment. But if we were to move forward with the TIF and everything, and then something happens and things happen in the economy, and companies make change their decisions and it didn't end up being a high V, I'd be very concerned about that because of the TIF. Even though they have to pay for it, you know, the longer it's not built, the longer it takes to close the district. Correct. Bottom line. That's what it's about. Closing that district as quickly as possible so the property gets back on the tax rolls. For the schedule that you talked about, Brian? Yes. For if we're paused for a little bit and those improvements don't get made until 2020 as opposed to 2019, what, are the, what is the typical build-out? And maybe our folks there, the developers that are here tonight, can share. What is the build-out time for a, st a store from start to finish once they break ground? For a grocery store? Yep. A year? So six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months? I, I, I'm just curious. I, I don't know the answer anybody, to that question. If anybody else knows that of the developers here? Festival will build a store in seven months. They're the fastest to build from the day they close to the day the store is open of anybody else. Can you share with what we are left? I'm Lauren Lofton with West and I represent Festival. Yeah. Thank you. So for about seven months, so I'm assuming that I'd be somewhere in that ballpark. Seven, 12 months. I was going to say nine before I heard that answer, but I think that would be a, a normal. Yeah. Expected timeline. <coughs> well, you need the infrastructure built, you know, in order to open up. Yeah, you're going to well. need some front end of the infrastructure done before you can start the. Right. Given this winter, I don't know when any public improvements are going to start this year. <laughs> Let's hope sometime we have frost out mm -hmm. of the ground. So, why don't you give us, Brian, for next meeting, what we would want to be prepared for? I think that you would want to be prepared to um, make a decision. I mean, t to me, th the key issue is when the the new TIF. Okay, let's assume that it's a new TIF for the high V project. And again, it relate. I, I keep on saying high V project, but the TIF and the discussions we've had relate to the construction of public improvements. Um, I, I think the question is, do you think that you would be able to make a decision on the creation of that TIF without having all of the information that you need to have about the potential for a grocer on, on the other side of the street? If the answer to that question is, we think we can go ahead with the creation of a TIF, notwithstanding unanswered questions with Festival Foods, then to me that suggests that you're willing to move, not pause anything, and you, and you move forward. 
if, if the thought process is before we, and you guys have touched on this a little bit in your comments, if, if we think that we need to really have more information about what's the potential for a grocer on the west side, because, and, and, and also what their potential TIF request would be, before we can evaluate the TIF request on the east side of the road to the point that we would actually make a decision on the creation of a district and push it forward to the Joint Review Board, if you need that information, then I would think that, I mean, I hope the decision, decision would be made, I think it would be helpful if your decision could be made at your March 4th meeting. In theory, you can wait till your March 18th meeting. But I think what you would, the decision you'd be looking to make are, do we want to pause the Hy-Vee project so that we can get more information about festival so that we can make an evaluation as to which one we want to support from a TIF standpoint? Um, that's one option. The other option is, you know what, we like the Hy-Vee project. Um, we don't think that we need any more information about what's happening on the west side of the street, and when we're willing to make a decision on, on TIF at the April board meeting, um, then I would say you, you don't have to pause the Hy-Vee project. Um, and to me, those, those are kind of, I mean, there may be some other alternatives that other village board members want to discuss, but those seem to be kind of the two decisions at the end of, the, uh, end of each side of the spectrum. One, pause one project to allow the other one, at least with their submittals, to catch up so you can have a full evaluation, apples to apples comparison, or don't pause it and just move forward with the high V project at this point. Not stopping festival, I mean festival can continue to file and we can continue to review, but the, right now under the schedule that we have, that April 1st date is, is the key date for the village board, I think, as it applies to potential creation of a TIF on the east side. What kind of costs do we incur and what kind of costs does our developers incur by pausing? Any additional? Uh, I don't, I don't think, the, the, the only cost for the village by pausing is an acknowledgement that we're probably not going to get the 2019 public improvements. I don't know to what extent there are additional. In other words, if the high V project were to move forward in April versus June, I'm not sure if moving forward and, you know, getting all of the approvals in June, to what extent that, that harms them. It, there, may be some, there may be some costs. I'm not sure what those would be. There, and, the, and there actually may be some cost savings if they don't have to get the public improvements done in 2019. That's just, I, I don't know the answer to that. Is pausing risk losing? I would hope not. I mean, I think that both sides of the street have, are professional grocers. They got professional consultants who are very good. They understand that your job or your fundamental role is to do what's in the best interest of the village residents. And I think everybody understands that when they walk in the door as a developer. And so to the extent that if you were to make a decision to press the pause button and, and because you wanted to have an apples to apples comparison, and it's, I mean, to me, somebody said this, the fact that there's public money involved maybe, you know, is potentially the issue that, that pushes you one way or the other. Um, if there was not public money involved uh, for the IV project, honestly, I think at a, at a staff level, we, you know, we may be taking a different position right now. I, we haven't made a recommendation, I think, because this is viewed as, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, I've used it as a policy decision, in part because there's public, you know, and probably in large part because there's public money involved. So if there's mine, so if the TIF, the TIF levels, if they're symmetric, are we going to let the other one rebid then, or what, how is this? I think that we're going to, we're, we're going to have to have, uh, that's going to be part of a conversation, I think. Um, it, when, when you, if, if you step back and you think, okay, our, what we want to do is what's best for the village, I mean, I, I think we have to get the, the formal submittal, I mean, under those circumstances, we'd need to wait, um, if you're going to consider both projects, wait to get the formal submittal from Festival, be able to compare them, and um, I mean, I can tell you right now that there are probably, and I'm not going to, again, I don't want to get into advocating for either project, but there's definitely a scenario where even if one TIF request is less than the, the request made by the other party, there would still be reasons why you would, may want to choose the project that has the larger TIF request because of any number of reasons, location, public improvements, the overall impact on the village. Um, the, the, where, where we're at a disadvantage right now is we just, you know, we have a lot of information on one side and not as much information on the other side. Okay. Any other comments? Otherwise, I'll table this till our next meeting and we can make a decision there. Any other comments? 
questions? Hearing none, we are quiet. All right. Um, I don't think we need to go into closed session then. Don't. On any of this. Um, yeah, so I just for a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Bill, second by Sue to adjourn. Call the question, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you everybody for being here this evening.